Got me on school bus. And um, bitches thought I was a race car driver. I go back there and pick them kids up. Some of the parents say, I don't know, I want my kid to get on that bus or not. <laughs> I'm coming in that bitch with that bitch to the bottom. <laughs> I burned a tank of, I burned up about two tanks of gas a day. <laughs> it fucked up when they told me, said, wherever you go, you take the bus with you. Shit, i would be all on the block and everything with that motherfucker. <laughs> you, know, you know wherever I get in with some with some gas on them, I got that radio up there on the ass thumping. Huh? Dig it. If you have a certain age, you know what that's from. I ain't gonna test y'all today. School is out. Sick of being tired, of being sick and tired. Better testify. That flame that burns inside me, bringing out the fire. I'ma get the things that I truly desire. You don't understand, so you call me a liar. Sick of being tired, of being sick and tired. Uh. That flame that burns inside me, bringing out the fire. Yeah. The end of the song I'ma right there. The sick and tired, of being sick and tired. You don't understand, so you call me a liar. I done been through hell and back. Get to nigga. Sick of all the things I'm receiving. I had that D Nation getting tuned, tap in. All right. Because I could play the whole freaking playlist, but. I'm going to calm down because this shit's hot. Spit hot fire. This Should Stop Podcast, T-H-I-S-Y-O-U-R-S-T-O-P Podcast. Search it just like that on YouTube. Please and thanks. It's free. I swear to God. I'm Machine Gun Johnny, Johnny Tsunami, Boston Johnny. Call me what you want, but do not call me for fronts, nor collect unless you're immediate family. And Big Red. Already know who it is and what it is, man. No, fuck with your boy. More importantly, fuck with the podcast. That's where we need to love. So more than you will look me up, look the podcast up. We got Boston's own in the building. You know what I'm saying? Good catalog, good music coming from him. Definitely tap in, see what he got going on. But shit, I'm going to let him introduce himself. Yo, what's good? What's good? I go by the name of the Real D Nation. For those who don't know me, I'm out of Boston, Massachusetts. Been doing this music thing for a little while. Got a great category. And I'm not stopping. I'm only getting started. I'm not hard to find. You can find me at therealdnation.com, natpiff.com, soundcloud.com. And definitely check out my latest video, Wake Up, that's out right now. Go listen to that. That's what y'all just heard coming in. And we also got another special guest in the building. You dig? It's popping. You got Marquina in the building. You can find me on IG only. Facebook, M-A-R-K-I-N-A-W, at I-G-N-Face. Busy. Listen, I'm a little excited, so I'm going to calm down. I don't care if you're known, unknown, local or not. I love art, and I love music. So we're going to get right into it. Tell us your business. You can go wherever you want to go, honey, because the people want to know. The people meaning me. Well, as far as my business... <laughs> My business aspect of music is actually building some type of foundation and building some type of legacy. So in order to accomplish that, I try to just stay consistent, Mm -hmm. always working, always working on the next thing or focused on the next thing. And sometimes, you know, I start a little trouble. Sometimes you got to start a little trouble up, you know, to get get people riled up for a second because it's a lot of great music, but everybody's not getting a chance to hear it because it's so much stuff that blinds the world you feel me so i'm just trying to open their eyes and wake them back up uh what's the name of the single the wake sing- up wake up yeah Period. make sure y'all know wake up uh, so let us know what part of boston you from i was born in dorchester but i lived everywhere dorchester babies in the building you yeah. already know how it is when dorchester come through the building man swaggy Rocks. you know you i got one a lot of rocks burying south, south in it Yes. <laughs> you dig? Now we got all Dorchester babies on the board. You dig how you like that one? Swaggy D. Yeah, I don't lived everywhere. I had one, you know, them parents that love to move around. So I lived everywhere in Boston, from Hyde Park to South End to 
Mattapan, Roxbury, you feel me? So I'm just all around Boston, dude. So you a man of the people, but you were born in Dorchester. Yes, definitely. Period. Word, we can't backpedal all that way. <laughs> no, no, Dorchester, no, Dorchester baby, did the born, You already know. Early. That's the point. You live in Dorchester. So when did you get into like? Um, <laughs> when did you get into rap? When did you first like? You know, start messing with the music. Well, originally, uh, to be to be honest, rap wasn't my first passion. Music was my passion, but rap wasn't my first passion. When I first started doing music, I went to Boston Arts Academy and was singing and shit. Nice. Oh. And then what happened was my older brother rapped. So this is around the time, you know, I shouldn't say this, but you know, the time the Hangman album came out, mixtape came out in the city. Shout out Hangman My three, bro was working on some know. shit to get on Hangman 3. He hit me up like, bro, work on this track for me. I did the, a chorus for him, you feel me? And after that, it's just like, damn, making a mixtape is kind of easy. Or mm-hmm. well, a little demo at the time. Like, damn, seven songs, this is easy. So I'm like, let me make a demo. But when I started writing the demo, after doing, like, working on an R&B song, it was like, damn, I got to rap on this. I got to add something. And that's how it happened. I started rapping and writing raps. And next thing you know, I started over, like, being a little progressing further than the ones around me that originally got me started. Right. Mm-hmm. And when they started seeing that, it made me start seeing more inside of it. So what made you know, like, yo, this is something that I can really do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could possibly get money out of it one day. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a career yeah. choice as opposed to a hobby. You know, being a kid watching all these different stars on TV, and i always been one of the people who watched the performances on stage and how they rocked the crowd. And that's one of the reasons why, honestly, originally I got into R&B. Because an R&B artist can make somebody think. Okay, like and, a five heartbeat. And I always looked at that shit like, damn, this dude can sing and make this girl think. I need that type of control on stage. Okay. And then it came to the point, like, when I got into the rap, and it's like, it's all about entertainment. It's all about pulling people in. It's, and it's like, it's, it's somewhat of a popularity contest. I hate to say it, but it's fun. Like, I just love it. You feel me? Like, the challenge. It's not as, it's not as fun as it used to be now because it's kind of a lot of people... Made it kind of washed up, but just the joy of doing music and actually meeting people and people loving what you're doing, singing what you're doing, and you're just knowing this all came from something you that you just wrote out your brain. Right. Mm-hmm. It's amazing to me. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. tell people that, you know, um, I think some of the dopest shit is when you can create something and people love it, regardless of what it is. You know, if it's sneakers, raps, you know, pods, whatever it might be, you know, bitches do hair. Everything. If you can really be creative and motherfuckers fuck with your creative creati- creativity, then that's dope. Fuck you know what I'm saying? Well, you heard what I said. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, yeah. Like, yo, I think that's, um... I'm gonna hit you back, bro. I'm at the podcast. You heard? I wish we had them on the Bluetooth right. since they got something to say. Yeah, but that's, um... <laughs> that's hella big, though. I feel like, um, it's always dope to be a creative. You know what I'm saying? So you brought me into one of my questions I ask a lot of people, but I'm glad you brought it up. Do you prefer sitting down creating in a studio or performing? Like, honestly, I love the creative process, but there's nothing like the stage to me. Mm. Me personally, I love the stage. Like, I love the feeling of meeting new people after I get off stage. They're just in awe of, of just, like, putting somebody into my world for a second. Mm-hmm. And, like, honestly, that's 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 the amazing part about being on stage. If you know how to control a crowd, you really know how to perform for somebody, and your music is really something that can touch a person, it's a whole different ball game. No, nah, definitely. When you um, when you write, where do you write from? You know, personal experience, yes. things you've seen. Yeah, I'm a reality writer. I look around... I see things, I observe things, I'm always observing things, I'm always watching, I'm always listening, and a lot of songs come from that, some of my songs, like, I don't wrote songs about, it might not be something particularly that I'm going through at that particular time, but I might know somebody who's going through this particular situation at this time, and that's how I've always been, like, I just observe the things that's going around me and turn it into a song, like, if you piss me off, there's a song coming out of that. I was about to say, shout out that song. Mm-hmm. Thank you, shout out pissing me off, <laughs> So how's that like oh uh, you know when you put in pain into these songs and to not put it to where it offend 
where you may got it from. You you understand? Like say you on this show, yeah. so like, you don't put shorty like, name in it, you know. But you yeah. know, yeah, yeah they know. Like he yeah. talking about me, yeah. And I'll be so like, honestly, like the thing about it, because even growing up, you feel me? Like I grew up with parents, I grew up with family who mingle with drugs. You feel me? So I understand the lifestyle and stuff. So even me putting that in my words, my rhymes back in the day, certain people kind of like, you shouldn't be talking about that. That's our family. You shouldn't put that in there. But like the, at the end of the day, a true artist has no barriers. Mm -hmm. That's why I respect the Eminems and the Tupacs. This is who I listen to. Like my biggest mentor as far as rap was Tupac. Mm-hmm. Personally, like I, I listen to it. The stories, Tupac, the pain. Yeah. It's like, yo, this is telling a real life story from Brenda's got a baby or to whatever else. Yeah, it's reality that some people might be blind to. Well, definitely. And I always been on that same note, like, yo, if I if I'm gonna do music, if I die today tomorrow, you want your shit, you want something to be left behind. I want my shit to stand for something. You feel me? I appreciate Girl. you brought up Brenda's got a baby, and then he got. Keep your head up, like it's it's still reality based, but like you, it's yeah. still reality based. But every single tune is not, oh, I lost my dog and they stole my bike. Like not yeah. every single, it, it's real, but it's not every single yeah. track. You know what I'm saying? It's a variety. Yeah, you gotta switch it up. You gotta have varieties. You gotta have that club song, that dance song, that chill song, that relax song. So and people still can relate to it. I appreciate that. So how did you get the joint on? Oh. D Nation, because I think that's dope. I think it's mad catchy. You know what I'm saying? How did you... Well, D Nation originally came from Domination. Uh, when I was younger, I had my rap named Domination. Then I seen a Source magazine. Um, a Source magazine um, fucking cover. Yeah, and then the on the cover, it had um this dude named Domination. And he was with... The dude back in the day that used to run around with on Daniel 50, Smurf. smurfing him, yeah. yeah. I remember so, Domination so Domination was, was his artist. So when I seen that in the magazine, I'm like, damn, he's already in the source. His name is Domination. So it's already legit. Right, it's right, right. So I'm right. like, damn, I got to change my shit up. And I'm like, D-Nation came from, I'm like, damn, Domination's cool. Let me try to switch to D-Nation. And then people are like, what does D-Nation stand for, though? And I'm like, D-Nation to me stands for exactly what it says, the nation. I want the world. I want to embrace the nation. I want my music to touch massives, not just Boston. Early. Mm-hmm. Uh, church in the building. We having church tonight, honey. No, nah, that's real. Shit. What is some of the um, local artists that you collab with? Exit Fame. Shout out to my man Exit Fame. I collab with him. I fuck with Fame. Man. I remember when he was Fame Flint. Um, Genius. Me and Genius. We Shout got a out lot to of songs. Genius. Shout out to Genius. Um, other than that, there's a I haven't really sat down and collab with too too many people yet. Who are some that you would collab with from this city? Well, it's a few. It's a lot of them. You know, Red Shades. Shout out to Red Shades. Um, K Thomas, K Watts. You know, K Watts, of course. Um, it's a lot of artists, man. Like. Even the famous ones from Bia, <laughs> like Early. you want to do a feature? I'm down for that. You feel me? Like it's a lot. It's a lot of artists because, like, think about our city. Like I said, I feel like there's a lot of talent, but then I feel like there's a lot of people who's not talented that are just being seen. So how do we? <coughs> because everyone should. It's hard how I'm gonna say it. Everyone should believe they're the shit, right? Yeah. So how are we going to weed out, yes, I have the confidence, I should have it, because you don't want to be on stage or in the studio like, oh, no, I, I don't think I can do it. No one wants to hear that shit either. Yeah. So how are we going to draw the line? See, my whole thing is to have real critics. It's like the thing about the industry people don't realize. There's a reason for A-list, B-list, and C-list celebrities. Everybody can't be an A-lister. You have to build your way to that. So even in the music industry coming up, even being local artists, like every local artist is considered just a local artist. But there's artists who've been putting in work for years who might, you know, be a have a lot of shit in this shit. You feel me? Like for instance, like people like Smoke Boju, who's taking off now. Shout out Smoke. 
like just people who's been seasoned in it. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you first starting back in the day, you have to do these showcases, you gotta do these tryouts, you might get turned down a few times, people might tell you you're not good enough. You had to go through the ringer. Nowadays nobody's going through a ringer. Everybody's just releasing stuff and saying I'm this and the person's like, Oh, you rap, hey, let's let's do this. And it's like what? Okay, okay. I think I too, um, because me and you speak about that a lot off the subject. I think that shit go back to like motherfucking censoring what is real. And I always said that it's like, yo, you have to play nice. Like you can't play rough now. Facts. You have to play nice. Like that's the only way you can come out and play now. Anything else, you look that crazy. And it's like now with that, you have a bunch of people where you got to keep patting people on the ass. Telling them no, it's okay. Yeah, fine. It, it <laughs> really ain't their back. okay. It really ain't gonna get motherfuckers nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Because then you will get around something you don't know when niggas really tell you about yourself. And you and ain't never hurt. heard no you know criticism in your life. Because a sure. lot of people get to these gates and niggas be, oh my nigga, that shit suck. Niggas the truth, it messed up, up a lot of shit to me. It. It's like when a lot of people started throwing showcases and just letting anybody perform. It came to yo pay for some tickets. You pay, you buy ten tickets, you could you get a slot. So eliminated the talent factor. As far as yo, let me hear your music before you get some tickets. These these niggas don't even listen to your music they first. They don't, they don't, they don't care, care to. Are you? <laughs> I want them tickets, so I want them bodies yeah. in the building. It's it. so like just pay me for the All tickets. Right, I'm gonna put you on stage. I was really doing that shit like uh, a couple years ago. Really like yo, if you pay for these ten tickets, nigga, you could perform. They don't know yet. Catalog, none of that shit. Like they don't even know what song you about to do. It's so crazy. Yeah, facts. And that's what I be telling. Um, I think we, I think we do. What you think it stops the city from going somewhere, Boston as a whole? You know, as a whole, I'll tell you what stops us from going as a whole. There is no real unity. Like everybody says, yo, we gotta fix this and we gotta do this and we gotta do that, but there is no real unity. Period. And it's like, that's why anybody can control anything. Anybody could do with anything. People come to di- from different states all the time and start showcases and run clubs and be like, yeah, I'm the new owner at this club over here. I just moved out here. It's mm-hmm. like, they don't give it to the people who's around. Wow. I'm about to come out of my seat right now. I'm I about mean, to stand up. Because of, seat. like you said, like, yo, the unity and yeah. a lot of shit like that is. A lot of times I always say that. Us, we respect out of town is more than we respect each other. Facts, we'll, we'll throw in the bag and chill and be good. When <laughs> the average nigga came and did the same thing, wouldn't be good. And that's down to, sorry to say, it, these DJs and radio presses now. These two facts, it's they all play, of them. It's, talk about they don't it. even give the local artists oh, an hour of shine. Shit, thirty minutes. But that's so what this you're stage lucky if you is get thirty for. minutes. Like, why can't y'all feature someone local? Like now, that's what this stage is for because I do feel that in Boston, you should hear a lot of Boston music. We don't hear that no Like, more. even we downtown. Like, like, you should really be downtown. Yo, we don't own the stations the, no more. The local yeah, artists, that's from the hood. I'll be honest. Like, even back in the day when Cold 5 came out, you heard it on Jamin 94.5. Like, Cold 5 is performing at this place, this to that. And it was local artists. Right. Like, end of the days, like, even back then when Triple Threat was taking off, for a point in time, you hear it on the radio. Triple Threat performing at so and so event. You don't hear it no more. They don't announce nobody doing anything. A Nobody's even paying for advertisement on because, the radio. And then the one thing you said, um, nobody want to pay. Most dudes that sat up here, you know, felt the way about a Boston artist charging them. Like, niggas don't understand why another nigga should charge for his music. And that's what I'm saying. Niggas always said that. We come from a city where niggas don't want to pay for what they believe in. And I always say that if you believe in, then that shit should be priceless. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. certain shit that I want for me to promote it, it's priceless for me to get it through this door. Even what number he put on it. But a lot of us, we don't want to pay. We don't want to go to the joint, pay the DJ. Yo, fuck that. We're going to stop this shit for the night. Just play nothing but Boston music. A little payola. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anytime I ever had a party, anything, that has always been my mind. I don't give a fuck. Fuck who's DJing. Nigga don't play nothing but our shit. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, we don't get that time jamming 94.5 yeah. or them big ass stations. You know, um, niggas used to have PJ Porter and all them on the 
college station and shit. That's what I you said, know the what I'm college saying? Yo, when the college station was lit, we had some. Yep, now that's that was our long. biggest outlook. People were actually getting looked at from. The, but then I used the to feel away too, like um, niggas getting played at ten o'clock at night. Yeah. Like niggas is, but the one the one thing about it is. The city falls like, and I'm not talking about the community, I'm talking about the outer people, politicians, shit like that. They don't see this shit bringing money to the city. So it's no so reason not to, give a shit. to for us to even think about it or give a fuck or invest in it because it's not like, okay, this artist is bringing a year, $4 million to the city just off his shows. And, you know, because I tell dudes that when you do a show, the businesses around eat. The sub shop eat all that shit eat off that one yeah, show. Facts. People don't understand that's how the city look at it. How this shit look this month when they did these shows. And if they could show, nah, listen, this motherfucker do a show everything up. Yep. They gonna promote them shows. Yeah, it's bringing profit you know into the saying? city. That's all they care about. And this I be telling motherfuckers that like we are a city where we don't want to pay for what we love. We don't want to pay for our shit. Niggas be talking about they own you. Like you said, niggas don't pay for promotion. How the fuck you a rapper? You don't pay for that. Yeah, it's the crazy shit. <laughs> All right. And I'm just saying, not even just rappers. I'm saying these promoters, like, no people book shows and nobody want to pay for radio advertisement. But at the same time, because it's, it's none of us, and you have to think, doing a show with niggas, it, it's too much shit you have to do in the middle to even think about promotion. You know what I'm saying? Because you know niggas is coming, niggas don't know how to act, all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, I feel with us, just hood niggas, we need to do better. You know what I'm saying? And we need to see that. Because like I said, yo, Boston, I feel, is at its hottest it ever been. It's a party keg music. right now. Music, everybody on fire. There's a lot of hot niggas. And I be thinking like, damn, do this nigga know what he doing? Can change his life, change his kid's life, change his mother's life. You know what I'm saying? Then to just be doing this shit, friend videos. I'm only doing it because my nigga's in a video. You know what I'm saying? We got to do this shit to where, yo, nigga feeding his family off this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what all these other niggas doing. But you know what this shit be is, is everybody's afraid to back an artist. Because everybody wants to be that first artist to get through that door. And so people don't realize. Wants to be the one. Yeah, everybody wants to be the one, but people don't realize sometimes you got to send a ludicrous through the door. Sometimes you got to send a little John through the door. You got to open up the floodgates. Once the gates is open, now it's time to start flooding them. More artists, flooding more them. artists. The city dropping this. And another artist from Boston, another artist from Boston. That's how it's supposed to be, but somebody has to open up the floodgates. And honestly, that the ones that's touching the industry. They not opening up nothing right now. What's Fat Boy's name that was um our DJ up here? Chubby Chubb. He said that. He said, yo, Boston niggas do a mixtape. They have a hot song. They think that's just the end of the world. Like, niggas are not grinding this music shit through. I tell every artist, there are supposed to be so much of you niggas don't have shit else to think about. That's how artists win. Like, artists win by producing. That's why I always tell a nigga, like, your brain should be unlimited as shit you can put on pad. So you should be able to do this shit at a high volume every day. Any beat come out, you tear that motherfucker up and, nigga, listen to this. Because the more the city hear you, the more the city gonna fuck with you. I don't give a fuck where you from. The more motherfuckers you're in motherfuckers' head, in niggas' cars, on niggas' TVs, it's gonna do what it doing. That's what I tell people, yo. Once the city start moving, like you said, together, ain't even gonna be about a label. Like we just gonna get it. All right, that sounds good, but I want to know from everybody. But first, you, <clears throat> excuse me, as the artist, we have all these ideas and what it should be and what we need to do. What is something tangible that a artist, a consumer, and a producer can do, like right now? To get the ball rolling because every like we've had a few artists appear say the exact same thing that you said. We need unity. We need unity. We need unity. But what are we going to do actively to do it? I'm like honestly, the ball to get the ball running to be a hundred percent real. It's all about the bag, and I'll be a hundred percent. It's all about everybody putting the bag together, and it's like. You could take one artist who you feel has the dopest single in the city and everybody put that bread behind that single and push that shit to the masses, it's going to show a difference. I like that. 
that's the only way that I feel like you gotta really put something through the masses, like how you break the station, like yo hey, his his um two hundred bands, a press kit and everything. We're doing a press run and everything for this song. We pushing this shit through the city. We're pushing this shit to to the other states and everywhere. And it takes people to get behind that type of movement. Once everybody's like, yo, we behind this, we behind this, it's something different, it's something bigger, you feel me? And that's what it takes. Nobody's behind anything. I'm not trying to be funny or like, um, what's the word I'm going to go for? But you know, that's the same thing on There's Ain't No Tribe With Wise Guys. Like, niggas try to put it together the way, yo, we all can eat and, yo, let's go get it. Niggas fucked a lot of this shit up, and that's what I mean. One thing you said... Niggas want to be the first one to go through the door. Right. Niggas don't want to push a nigga through the door, and then we all coming behind them. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I feel that that's a problem, but um, we do need to start throwing bigger showcases and putting more artists on them stages. You know what I'm saying? Giving more niggas a voice. And I do feel like how you be out and seeing you on shit with other rappers. It has to be that way. Niggas got to start linking with each other. Yo, what up, Dan? That shit was cool. Or, yo, that shit wasn't cool. And niggas know how to take it. Put now, your feelings to the side. Yeah, that was going to be my next question before you so nicely interrupted. Was that, is it realistic for some type of sit down? Like, I don't want to be like idealistic and fake. But is it is that really possible? Because you're talking about the showcase. You're talking about promoters. And you work with other artists willingly. Is that really something that can happen? It is. Like... Honestly, it would have to happen with the ones who's really active and doing something. Like, you can set up a meeting and have a whole bunch of people sit down and start throwing ideas. Mm -hmm. But you have to have it with the ones who's willing to say, all right, yo, here's an idea, and we could put something behind it. It has to be the right ones to sit down. Otherwise, the conversation is never going to go nowhere because there's going to be a whole bunch of egos. And the, most people with the biggest egos ain't putting no money behind nothing. So, I'm like, I'm, honestly, you have to wait till you, like, it has to be the right people. That's the only thing I think for the, the proper meeting, the proper sit down, the proper understanding to have a, to calculate how much you have to invest as an equal, you need the right people whose mind state is on business. I definitely think that. I definitely think, um, too, like you said, you got to get the motherfuckers that's really moving and doing something to, you know, be able to come to the table, but I feel a lot too. Motherfuckers got to start putting more value on the shit that they do individually. Like, motherfuckers got to know they individual work. I feel like once niggas are secure and know what they bring to the table, you stop giving a fuck about whatever people bring into the table. You know what I'm saying? Like, once you secure in who you are, a lot of that shit be showing niggas ain't secure in what they do and who they are and how they move. Because if it was, then everybody would be able to move together. Because everybody would feel, yo, once it's my turn, I'm going to tear this shit down. And that's how most artists feel when it be big. You got to think, it be niggas going behind Drake, going behind Future. And you got to have confidence go behind these niggas. And you know the crowd's on 10 once they like, you know what I'm saying? Or the niggas that go be forming, you heating the stage up. Motherfuckers got to start knowing, like, yo, it's more to it, like you said, coming together. Niggas got to know it takes niggas to build this stage for you. Like, it ain't just, yo, D Nation. Everybody got to be able to come together to make D Nation big what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how they say it takes a community to raise a child? Yes. It's kind of similar. Yes. To be honest, it takes a community to, to break barriers. It takes a community to, to um, change the standards of the average, the norm. You feel me? It takes, it takes a lot. And all you need is the right, the right group of people. Like, it's all about sharing, all about promoting the things people don't like to do. People will see a post and push the like button before they push the share button. I'd rather you push share before like. Let's erase the like button. Just put the share button there. No bullshit. So I'm a lot different, you feel me? Because it, it, it sets the algorithms in a frenzy. The more people share it, the more the algorithms click into it. The more what they I tell I'm a dude that, um, I do that because, like I always tell dude, I share niggas' music I don't even be knowing, but I show niggas this star ahead. When you go on my page, like, if you was to really look down at it, you don't know what the fuck going Because it's, it's everything. It's everybody. It's a community. It's all of us. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even the way you can see that shit and be like, it's just me and her. That shit, a bunch of us on it. You know what I'm saying? So, I think, like you said, we do need to do that. Share niggas shit. I always say that. Niggas need to share other niggas' pods, other niggas' music, other niggas' videos. Instead of just clicking the like. 
And I feel a lot of niggas when they don't do it, it's just hey and stop hating, man. Niggas gotta get that hate out their blood, man. Niggas gotta stop being fucking haters, man. Because even if you a hater with yourself, that shit's a problem, my nigga. Even if nobody else would know you didn't share it because it was out of hate, that shit's a problem. Most of us in Boston, when niggas don't like each other, it's usually some dumb shit. It's very rare two niggas had a, a situation, yo, they turned up on some, yo, we don't like each other. You know what I'm saying? So niggas need to start, like, fucking with each other. And like I said, not even if it ain't being around each other. Share nigga shit. Show niggas love. Yeah, I can't lie. I feel like we have a big, a real big emotional city. So, <laughs> like, what I mean by that is a lot of people okay. catch feelings mad fast. Okay. A lot of people love the pillow talk. Nobody like to tell you how they feel. Like, like anybody who's watched me on Facebook, I talk a lot of shit on Facebook, and I say it all the time. I feel like there's great a bunch of great artists in our city, but there's also a bunch of trash artists, and we gotta eliminate that shit some way, somehow. We gotta stop telling everybody you're nice and everybody you're good and everybody you got it because they don't. And like honestly, people get up. Some people ask, "Fucked up? You shouldn't say stuff like that. That's offending people. You can hurt somebody's feelings." And I'd be like, "What are y'all talking about? This is music, right?" Real shit. Hip hop's always been a competition. Some of the best artists you ever seen, y'all know them because they started off on the streets battling in somebody. Oh, you feel me? Music's always been a lyrical competition. So, like when people start crying and talking about I'm hurting feelings and shit, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You gotta get your people. mind. It's time to grow up. It's, it's definitely, time, it's time definitely, it's definitely time to grow up. But we definitely from an emotional city, and that's why I always tell niggas like, yo, on my part. My nigga, niggas catch me, my bed ain't cut without niggas can roast, niggas can talk shit. That's what we build and we build in an honesty space. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Where you can you come and that, you can man. kick it and it don't have to be on the same page. You know what I'm saying? Do you think it has anything to do with the size of our city? Honestly, I don't think it has anything to do with the size of our city. I think it has to do with the mind state. Because personally, like, and I've done the math. If you, if you Google right now, check how much citizens is in the, in the state of Atlanta. And then check how many citizens is in, in um, the city of Boston. The city of Atlanta, the city of Boston. Not even Georgia. You feel me? Not even Georgia or Massachusetts. Just the city of Atlanta and the city of Boston. We have way more people in Boston than Atlanta has in Atlanta. But we don't have that same momentum. And the reason why, because we haven't created a su successful um, community. Like honestly, you go you go to Atlanta. Their their hip hop community is a successful community. Yeah, real mm -hmm. shit. They make sure they turn most of their artists into celebrities or close to it. Mm -hmm. Like you getting paid to do this show, you getting paid to do this, you getting exposure to do this. It's something different. You feel me? So I I went to Atlanta. If you go around, it's a flashy city. Mm -hmm. Everybody driving around in all types of fancy ass cars, jewelry on, showing out. But to me, the um. The way black love is, the way the community just is connected is just something completely different than I ever felt anywhere else. Yo, oh, I always tell people that my number one city in America is Atlanta. Georgia. That um, it's something about it that gives you motivation. Yeah, it gives you hustle. It gives you we're down here. It's, it's us here. You know what I'm saying? You go to McDonald's, all black people. Foot Locker, all black people. Like, right, it's, it's, it's different. different. Waffle House. And I be telling niggas, niggas be down there, bitches be having the whole side of their face tied it in Foot Locker. Just, what size you want? Shit totally different because so much shit down there is what we built. Up here, motherfuckers, is like so much taught to hate each other. Yo, watch what each other's doing in a fucked up way. There's really never been no love within a black community in Boston. They act like they love you in your face, but... They talk shit behind your back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Then you, you hear the story. Yeah, our city, that's, that's what we used to. We used to the ones who we, we think really fuck with us. Yeah. Chilling with us. And then Thank somebody else like, yo, this person was trashing you. This person was trashing you. On that low, low jelly seat. And one thing about it the is too, niggas be really knowing... Uh, this shit, it's something about them. They know, yo, I can be 18 and become a millionaire. Like, Facts. They, they know that shit. That's why they see that shit. These they embedded with that shit in their minds. Young niggas wilding at 16. You see them at 18, yo, this nigga really moving. All these little niggas. And what they do is just keep putting their crew on. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's like, what they doing. They real shit, shit nigga. I'm going to put yeah. my crew on. I'm gonna they put, put the, everybody on. That's now you a shooter. Really you ain't a shooter no more. Now you a rapper. Now rap about all that shit you was shooting about. Real shit. Like, yo, this shit is so much the way they come together. That shit how you like. Yo, we are way off. We're way off. Bro, way, way completely off. We, yo, We're the way sad part, off. we look at down south and be like, Tell down me. south's behind on us. Education-wise, they slow compared to us. No, they not. They figured it out. I'm telling you. Hustle hustle is so hard in the south. I tell niggas that, like, yo, you go to Atlanta, and this is why I tell most people that are real with us, they move to Atlanta, because it's only two fucking ways. Either you're going to be broke or you're going to be rich. It's one of the other in Atlanta. Right. There is no middle ground. You can't live down there just, I'm living okay. Nah, no. Nah. You're either going to be rich or you're going to be broke in the A, nigga. And that's how the A work. Like, when I was down there, the same shit he was saying, like, I'm like, damn, this shit's crazy. Especially my first time coming down, it was like, damn, this shit's dope as shit. Like, just seeing niggas stick together and, like he said, all the expensive cars, niggas in jewelry, like, you running into a Jeezy in Macy's, and it's nothing like, you know what I'm saying? Shit's totally different. And I feel up here, we just don't realize the the capital, you know what I'm saying? Now, what did they realize is if you even pay attention, they be like, fuck them personal feelings. This is business. And they mm-hmm. know how to set those two to the mm-hmm. side. I'm telling you. Because mm-hmm. it's about that bag. I got to feed my family. You got to feed yours. Prime example, Jeezy and Gucci's versus. Mm. Come on. Big Somebody money. Died. Wow. But, but it was like, big money on the line. That, nigga. It was big money to see them you niggas out there to together. You ain't got to like me tomorrow, bro. But let's wow. go get the And they bag. went to the club after and turned it out. And you yeah. know that was two Took bags. both of them. That was two bags. Exactly. Like, they got the first bag. Now we're going to go to the club and turn the city up, us being in there. Right. And I be turn saying, like, up. yo. In the same room. That's all it took. Y'all yeah. being in the same room. Anything niggas see this shit stop on, only thing I ask, I don't ask this shit else. I don't give a fuck how drunk you get. I don't give a fuck who bitch you take, who nigga you take. I don't give a fuck about none of the ratchet shit we do. Let's do it. Do everybody make it the fuck home safe? Like, we have to start coming out. And going to fuck going home. Going home. Yes. Like oh, everybody home. that's there has <laughs> to make it home. home. We cannot be somebody lost their life over some stupid shit. Niggas got to start knowing how to come out, fuck around, let's ill all night, go to fuck home. And everybody be able to say, yo, I woke up. Because that shit like. Yeah, it got to be some rules or something. Yeah, like, yo. The, regulations. And that's all I ask of the city on my shit. That's Please, no don't violence. Have that's it. anything anymore in the neighborhood to do. We got to go. And I want to put together, we trying to work out some details now um, since we have a rapper in the building and one that put on Ford City. Um, we're trying to put together a showcase like the end of May. Something like 15, 20 artists. Let niggas rock. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to find a park and do it and have some dope shit where the city could come out. But even with that. Speaking of showcases, matter of fact. Can't have no violence. Um, I'm definitely for that. Keep that shit at home. Also in May, not to throw a curveball or nothing in the situation, May 21st, I will be crushing Boss HD on stage. So if anybody know Boss HD, his music and all that, he challenged me. It's a five-band bet, five versus me, five Early. versus him, 10K on the line. I'm crushing him on stage, so I hope he's you ready. you said that's the 21st of May? May 21st, we will be Damn, going against each other you. for $5,000. It's going to be in New Bedford. Okay. We're going to try to pull up, but I'm going to tell I'm you saying, that. Honest, honestly, it's going to be a, a certain capacity, but everything else will be online for the ones who can't get inside. Tell it. homie, definitely get in. tell homie, once you crack his head, right, he could come back to Boston on, its, on like the 28th, 29th and get his money back. You know what I'm saying? We could do another one when we do our showcase. Nigga can have a chance to come and get his money back in the hood. He you know from out I mean? here. He from out here. Whoa. Like, yo, because so I definitely right own. We've been thinking about doing some battle shit, too. Like, we was thinking about having two niggas just battle three rounds, back and forth, go at it. Because I feel that's another thing that's big up here. But niggas don't do it because of the drama. Yeah, niggas know you couldn't speak to a nigga like that on stage. Shit would get ugly. Yeah, niggas be in they feeling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can't lie. That's can't why, like, personally, truth. I used to try to, when I first started rapping, I was battle rapping people. 
mm-hmm. and like, I almost got into a lot of fight, fights because of battle rap. Wow. Because a lot of people's emotions get in the line because you're picking on them. It's the truth. Like I'm looking at your clothes no, and talking I'm about your hat. But that's how it's supposed to be. That's where, but see, niggas don't know. That's where it's supposed to be. Yeah. That's that's know. Be. Like, everybody's emotions can't so handle that shit, especially when they got their mans around them. And if you start saying some shit so hot that their mans is like, oh, that's what I'm trying to tell now you. Now niggas looking at you like, yo, I'm that's why I'm niggas killing. don't be having it to where. Two niggas are on the stage because niggas know up here that shit will get turned up over that conversation. Even if the nigga feel okay, this is what we doing. But see, the one thing I feel we keep missing is niggas ain't getting no bags from none of this other shit. Yep. And with that shit, it's really ways for niggas to get on cars and to get a bag for that shit. You know what I'm saying? And think about it. If a bag start out at twenty five hundred, just think about where that shit go as start. you keep no shit. As, as you keep accelerating. You look up, nigga. Now you get hundred thousand dollar bag. That's how I look at it. Like I, I, I look at it like yo, fuck. Let's set a trend. Their show for them, so they don't really yeah. care because they getting their money. Back. They getting money. You ain't getting shit out of it. I'm telling you. Yeah. How the fuck? All the expenses. How you an yeah. artist and you and buy tickets? And you have a hot DJ who has the capability to, you know, promote the shit via radio or whatever. They don't do that. They wait for the week of the show. Like, bro. Really? Because it's like so many of these artists is like branded promotions books so you know. To me it's time to set a trend and that's like they crew is just them. You need I be telling niggas even of that. You need like a crew to the shit you doing, like you know, even made men when they was running around. Yo, they had niggas that was going to we see had the that DJ. Real shit. Real niggas was going team. down to the joints. Yo, room. tonight niggas is coming, bro. This is what it is. If you feel anything, let us know right now. Because we can work it out right now. Like, niggas was coming and putting pressure on. That's why I always say niggas don't give the nigga dog his motherfucking roses. Like, nope. niggas got to get. And that's another reason why shit ain't working for niggas. Yep. Because the main nigga that can get his shit thing. working ain't in the city. Yeah, they still in their emotions over some 1990 shit. I'm telling you. And it be crazy because, yo, I done heard so many niggas say some wild shit about them. My nigga, they wasn't even like. Born even, they would, wasn't even Thought close of, to knowing him. Wasn't even born yet. Like you was five niggas away from him. And you talking about what he did to you. My nigga, if you don't get the fucking like, yo, we <laughs> have to stop doing this shit, my nigga. Yeah. We got to start representing and understanding like, yo, who started shit, where it come from. Yo, who was the one that brought this shit to the city? Because he was. Other than Bobby B, who the fuck else? You know what I'm saying? And even with Bobby B, like, niggas should be dealing with him. Well, I'll be honest, like, ain't nobody, like, nowadays, people come to the city, but nobody's really bringing shit to the city. Like, uh, most artists who make it out the city nowadays come to the city to get it back. And, I'll be 100% honest. Like, who, who wants to do a quick feature real quick? Most features, people don't even realize, if you do a feature with an artist who signed to a label, if the feature's not cleared, then it's a waste of time waste doing the feature. To, nah. Because you can't do shit with that song. <laughs> Can't. And that's the, that's the issue So most people will come out here Lil Boosie came out here Got mad artists to do features Anytime an artist come out here Everybody run Oh my god I'm about to be famous And do a song with so and so So and so is looking at you like a bag Like let me get a quick mm-hmm. band from this dude Because 1500. like a lot of times They know niggas don't know what to do with it Like know they the know business. once they even give you the 16 You don't know what to do with the 16 And if you don't know what to do with it That's just money in the pocket and I tell niggas that you know how many niggas come and get money in the pocket? But see, like I was saying them on, um, who was it, homie from Michigan, he got a joint where it's like, yo, pay me 7500 and um, I'll do a whole mixtape with you and the videos. Just pay me this. Like, niggas are hustling out here in this music shit. Niggas ain't playing with this shit. That's why I'm like, to see the city just playing, it's like, Niggas is missing bags, my nigga. Niggas is missing millions. Think about it. 50 was just out here, what, two days ago? How much you think they paid him to perform at Big Night Live? Hmm. 50's a bag. You got to drop a bag on him. Or he bought it out, regardless, either way. You feel me? And it's like, probably not one local artist up there opening up. Nobody from the city up there. You're not giving a person a chance to get a showcase. Like Even back in the day when I went to the Rough Riders Cash Money concert, before the concert started... They announce, whoever think you got talent, come to the stage, come get on the stage. If you yeah. think you can get on the stage, see what it takes, walk up here. Like, that was the shit that brought out other talent in the city. Because somebody's like, yo, and they in the back, like, yo, who's rapping like that? You feel me? That's something different. We don't do that type of shit no more. 
But that that goes to show you like how much like that's what I'm saying. Like and even, you know, what was it? Kinda even like the rough rider shit. Even though they tried to shit on niggas, they gave niggas so many points. And niggas don't see this shit. Um, not just Benzino, twice now. Like all them niggas do for Boston. Like when niggas used to do that shit, that was them niggas. And niggas got to think when niggas slide through and niggas be like, oh, you from Boston and niggas get that love. Like, where you think that came from? Like, it was a wrecking crew in the 90s. Like, niggas knew when they seen them Bruins jackets what time it was. Like, now nah, these niggas is head. And they own it. And they don't give a fuck with niggas from. Niggas know how Boston came in. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, when niggas just trying to stick together, I think Benzino kind of had that eye when he seen, yo, what if I try this wise guy shit? If I could just get everybody to fuck with each other, we can tour off that. And that's what I said. Until they could put all of us in one building, Ain't no money coming to the city, my nigga. Until they could put all these rappers in one motherfucking building and be able to show it, ain't no money coming to the hub. So we don't need to say it. We don't need to say it on camera, but off camera, I think people, you, especially you as an artist, D Nation, that we need to talk about who should be in the war room. In the war room, I mean like the draft room. We can't have, like you said, we can't have every single person that thinks they're hot in the room throwing ideas. We got to narrow it down, and it has to be, like, draft picks, I think. I think it comes to, like he said, it goes from, like, um, there's A-list actors, B-list. Niggas got to start understanding that. You know what I'm saying? And that's what promoters, rappers, podcasters, Everybody, it's a it's a top tier of them, and that whole top tier should get together. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because that's what it really take. Like the ones that still in the city tonight, right. Antonio Sardes, all right? Them. Call them all them voice. Those be the voices that niggas should hear because this is the niggas that can take it somewhere. They know they faces. You know what I'm saying? And niggas don't know how real that shit is. Like just being able to go like in them offices. They out of no well, respect, just, no respect, out of order. They ain't listening to like they don't believe in oh that's your elder. They say oh that's my OG. You can say that to you, fucking red in the, the eyes, but do you respect them? Tell you respect them enough to say oh well, okay, we can agree to disagree. I don't like what this person's saying, but no, they these ninjas are kill the OG. It's only you, man, and it's like, like that because there's nothing, no way because. He feel like he's sunning him or... Wow. You know, that, that's a whole nother issue. Like, you know? there's no way motherfucking um, Antonio Saudi shouldn't still have a store in the... Like, there's no way. Real shit. Like, that's what I'm Antonio saying. Like, that's yeah, how much closet. niggas don't support each other. Bag. Some old school shit. No bullshit. I'm gonna pull it out. <clears throat> wow. The clear AA bags. I remember them shit. Yeah, the clear <laughs> ones with the um, yeah. Like, come on, y'all gotta respect the game. A lot of us really started this. We just didn't have yeah. the resources you and guys and have and access to. No bullshit. Today. It's yeah, sad. The problem is too is like going, so yeah. people don't respect who started. Yeah, and some people they, don't respect they where it's going. It. That's why. That's why. And some people don't respect where it's going. Like you and got some older has these elders got to respect what these youngins yeah. are doing too. You can't be mad because they getting what you couldn't get when you started. I call them the grumpy grandpas. Yeah, like stop acting like the grumpy. Nah, I be man. telling dudes that like, you gotta understand. Old um, ladies, you know Hov, Hov at his prime and really in rap, he didn't get the money that a corny ass rapper get to go to a show right now. Like niggas wasn't grabbing. $25,000 a show. No, not at all. He was grabbing like $5,000. Yeah. That, Little shit, $2,500 and breaking that with the crew. Like, motherfucking. Right. Whoever's on the stage. Like, niggas them. don't know now on. How easy they Niggas is getting it. million dollar bags for a yeah. show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Niggas is getting 20000 on a walkthrough. Just come through the club. Right. That's it. And we're going to give you money to spend here. We're going to give your crew the bottle, bottles. Like, a whole VIP I be telling section. motherfuckers that like they don't know Niggas how. Niggas who was really rapping back in the 
they didn't get that kind of money. These rappers are living damn near free now because anything they do is like once they take a picture in this full joint, like you know what I'm saying, they kind of promote the shit. So Yo, the it's rap like, game is like crazy. politics now. Like they already choose who they want to be hot. They stay hot. You could be someone hotter than them lyrically and the whole nine. But that person's gonna always stay on the top. So that's where you got your A A A. Industry is a machine. Rappers. The industry you yeah, gotta understand is it's a different game. It's, it's all it's machine. all about implanting shit in your brain. Songs in your brain. Like that's why you listen to the radio and they play the same exact song over and over and over oh, again. Bullshit. And I know personally nobody called this station and voted for this song they to be played again. Do the, um, Line. Do that. I don't, I don't uh, listen to the radio. Like, yeah, the top ten songs of, that, of today, I'll be like, nah. But see, that's where that's where niggas don't. Radio station. Oh. Like where they just go in the radio station and they press play, and they got their set playlist. You can tell because some of them come in and on this change of shift and will play the same fucking song that just was on before. No like, like, And you know what's coming next. You're not even paying attention. That's how the radio game is. Now. Yeah. No, that shit is definitely like that, but that's what I'm trying to say. You gotta respect the dudes because dogging them and you know other niggas, not even just in Boston, all around was fighting fifty in them. Yo, why the fuck y'all ain't playing nigga shit on the radio? I shit the hottest shit in the streets. How the fuck y'all ain't playing? Because it is, it's a selection. Mm-hmm. We're we're here to play these thirty songs. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that's what if I mean he had about to make a song. How he'll rob the whole industry. Early. Them to pay attention to him. No bullshit. I know he wish he would have, um, what you call it, trademarked the mixtape game. Because he, 50, go get your bag, man. He killed that. He killed that. What else now everybody's about that? saturating it out. Yeah, just he doing anything. Trademark that every mixtape came out, he getting a piece of that bag. Yeah, he definitely would have killed him. But I think yeah. that's what made 50 smarter. Made 50, yep. made 50, 50, real what smart made 50 take off so bad was not only the fact that he was consistent. But also his history. Yeah. To be real, him getting shot and then getting signed. And that moment, wrong, you feel me? Yeah, and when it, his own people level. wouldn't sign him in the neighborhood. Like, see that, in see New that. York, they didn't sign him. He had to go way on the West Coast and let the like, cause the fucking, Eminem, let the Eminem. Yeah, but not a, because the you know? thing too, it once, once rap have a prototype, that's the prototype the next couple years until somebody break that barrier. So you notice... Anytime in hip hop, sucker shit make his way through, and then soon as somebody come with that hard shit, that's what be rocking. Yeah. Like at the time Fifty came, it was none of that shoot 'em up shit. No, no, nah, everything hard. was like ludicrous. Everything was just good yeah. music. You know what I'm saying? Like club music. It was a curveball. You know what like I'm saying? Move. You gotta think. You gotta think whose competition was who he right. took down. Ja Rule was the fucking. Ja Rule was already getting the, getting it. Just my opinion. I think Ja Rule was already coming down. Because me, I was already getting tired of his voice on everything. Especially <laughs> well, when I my baby. All that shit. Yeah, that and shit I think crazy. he said just came at that right time and was and it made it easier for him to just wipe him out. That's just my opinion. But you got to see to take now. A, To take an A-list celebrity down as a new artist yeah. is a lot because everybody can't do it. You got to think. Even cannabis, he tried mm-hmm. it with L.O. Cool J as tried a new artist. It. Yeah, tried it. And nah, it didn't work. Cannabis L- ain't you heard from cannabis? L was yeah, like, it like, was a great. He L- can rap. L was too much. He can rap. Machine. That's the crazy you part. At L? You don't go at L. L. Boy, you crazy. But what's the name? Just did that I shit too recently record. on Griselda. Griselda came in, changed the whole sound of rap. Like, yep. and that's what I'm get, telling you. Once niggas go into that real hip hop. That shit can't be denied. Niggas gonna fuck with that shit. And that's what I'm saying. For them niggas that come in, you gotta think, what? Benny probably getting like $500,000 a show. Like, just running through this shit. Like, niggas is coming straight in the game. And if they know what they doing, they get into it. And that lead me into this shit I want to ask you. What is your um your goal in it? Like, to get signed, do something independent? Like, what do you... What are you looking to get out of it as far as, like, where you're going? Well, like, like, honestly, personally, like, of course, I would love to stay independent and fucking drop a record that just takes off to the masses, and now I got a, the best independent lifestyle. But if a deal was offered on the table, the right deal, that I know personally I could utilize to change my family's lives, I would take it. 
I can never be a person that be like, I wouldn't take a deal. Like, even people be like, damn, I'd never take a 360 deal. Now, personally, I know what a 360 deal consists of. It depends on how long years of time you ended this deal and what you could do as far as what you could bring back because it's all about your points. If you drop an album and you, the royalty points and all that's low and you don't make back up the difference of what you was actually given as an advance, then you're not going to equal back to that. But if you know your music is going to sell and you got confidence that your music can sell, there's nothing wrong with taking a, a chance to get yourself on a bigger platform. I don't see what would be wrong with a um. See the one thing, and that's why I say because we hear shit and then we just go off of it. Yeah. We don't do no research, no mm -hmm. nothing. Niggas don't be knowing. So when niggas hear three sixty, a nigga just fell. Now nah, this is them just taking three sixty of all my money. <laughs> like my nigga, it ain't. But one thing you gotta know, being locked into a three sixty, I think the most important shit is the shit you said. The years. If you yep. tell me I'm a new artist right now just coming from the hood, you going 360 me for the next three years. Cool. I would take it. Why? First and foremost, you're going to make me a priority. Yep. I only get money if y'all get money. That's and that's the best shit you want to be in coming in again because now y'all got to push me in front of everything. All these little shows and shit, you got to put me on them if y'all want y'all money. Yep. And with labels, they want their motherfucking money. So for them to even put you in it, they already see the money. Yo, we got this Dorito commercial. We could throw them in this right here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So I feel with 360, you being off the streets ain't bad because it makes you a priority. Now, if it's three years, in them three years, you're supposed to soak up and use so much yeah. of that light that in three years, you could just take right. all by yourself. You know what would be the sad part is a lot of people get around those type of situations, and they get signed to deals and travel the world, meet all types of celebrities, but never gain any contacts. Because they was too busy having fun mm -hmm. and not actually yeah, thinking yeah, about the business working. side behind it. Working. But we done also seen. Not realizing they working just like you. That's like some yeah, yeah. artist is. Yeah, yeah, they working. Yeah. You also you know seen like they how people me. were. No bullshit. Mm -hmm. You seen. But. Boom. Let me. um, Because I wanted to say that when he was talking the first time. But we seen artists that say, yo. I was with this label, it was crazy, and then they take off their own, their own, and don't do shit. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas don't understand independent. It's all about you. When shit don't work, it was because of you. Yeah, yeah. There's nobody you, else you could blame. There's no, yo, my album, get, I didn't push that shit. You know what I'm saying? But the one thing I want to say, too, like you said, as a podcaster, blogger, rapper, actor, any of this shit, once you put yourself in the light, you are, you are up for scrutiny. At all your moves, anything you put out there, it is meant for motherfuckers to talk about it, yeah, regardless yeah. if you like it or not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I tell niggas that you have to know that when you're a person that do shit for people, anything you put out. My podcast, I know it's a couple, now I don't fuck with that shit. You know what I'm saying? A nigga can't look at it, you're going to be 100 for 100, but you got to know what you put out there. Yeah. People are going to feel different ways about what you're putting out there. And you have to understand that knowing a person that put your life or your shit to the public. Once you put it to the public, it's in the public hands. You got to know what you're signing, too. You got to know your contracts. Mm. People get excited and don't look at their contract. Because they're so like, yo, oh my God, it's about to, my life's about to change right now. So you got to know what you're signing. Come on, new edition. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that's the sad part. That's what our legends in our city did. They didn't read their contracts. And that's why we don't have the 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 new additions living in the city, like owning a mansion down the block. Because back in the day, they was kids and blew up. Mm -hmm. If they would have really had the right money as kids, I'm pretty sure it'd be a lot different. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they didn't get and then you they didn't get paid thing. like that. They got clothes and jewelry. Niggas' and mothers cars. was from projects and shit. Niggas was just thinking, okay, we heard this number. This number sound good. You know, people wasn't even thinking it. And the fucked up thing, like, what I feel with us... I didn't, I didn't what's the name on that shit? I mean, oh, like, homie, what's the other nigga, new nigga that came? Johnny Gill. Johnny Gill. He owned Ralph no edition. Bought the shit or something. I'm like, what? He ended up buying it off of Ralph. He owned the shit solely. Even now, that's why they can't use it. Hey, unless he's they there. Let's an uh, outsider come into their group. That and let you all know your when. Name. He's a sucker. Johnny that let you know when money fucked up. But Fuck um, we have to stop like. 
They should have whooped his ass. Blaming motherfuckers <laughs> for um. I don't give a fuck. I always felt like why ain't niggas whooped Johnny's whooped ass. ass I think niggas should have whooped Johnny's ass. They should have whooped Johnny's ass. They should still whoop. Boston his ass. niggas should have put Tim to that nigga. How the hell you got our nigga? What? Yes. Oh bullshit! That is crazy. That's fucking crazy, man. But I'm um, at it. y'all just touched the nerve. I got triggered. Motherfucker, yeah, shit. Ass. Ass. We gotta start knowing when it's like, yo, we didn't get gotta beat. Come and take we beat spot. ourselves. You know, a lot of people don't like to realize that and just yeah, be, I mean, yo, in the moment, that. damn, I was fucked up. I didn't know no better. My mom's there. Okay, now I know better. How do right. I move forward? Right. Because a lot of shit, when you just feel people did you wrong, that shit hinder you for the rest of your life and doing the better shit. You know what I'm saying? And at some point, you got to say, okay, that was a downfall. Let me rearrange it. Let me get smarter in the game. And I feel like that's what dudes is doing now. These yeah. rappers is getting smarter. They know when they work. Fuck no, I'm not doing that. Y'all got to pay me what y'all was going to get a label. Dudes is knowing more on that value, with that likeness. Yo, right. you're using me for this. If my motherfucking jacket's in this, then, yeah, my nigga, I need to be paid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They run around with the N E. Man, whoop his ass. Like, to be honest, yo. It's, yeah, easier. To, it's sad to say it's harder, but it's Fuck easier to get shit. signed to a yo, label these days. Whoop his ass, y'all. You said easier? It's harder, but it's, it's easier it's, to it's get easier signed to, to a label these days. Up. The yeah. reason why it's harder because there's so many artists, but it's easier because there's not so many people wanting to sign to labels. A mm-hmm. lot of people are willing to run it independently. So it's easy to get a real deal. If you get if you get a chance to sit down with these connects, and that's the hardest part that I could say personally that I be feeling like. Because it's, no, it's breaking the bridges to get to the right connects to sit down with these right labels and have these right conversations so they could listen to your music and hear your music and stuff like that. You feel me? And it's like, it's so much independent shit nowadays. The labels don't even know how to find the artists. But a lot of shit now, like I be telling niggas, me, you got to take it back old school sometime and walk that shit to the door. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like when niggas be hearing, yo, it's a revolt summit. I be telling people, like, when niggas hear all these summer, this is where everybody's at. And you got to think, like, when Puff ain't there, it's the top niggas under Puff there. And it be a bunch of other rappers there. Six assistants. You know what I'm saying? Like, and believe it, but nigga hear some hot shit, a nigga, yo, bro, you got to hear this shit. Is that still happening, though? Definitely. Not as much, but I think they still still have it. Like, hand-to-hand combat? Like, you know that... 50s coming, I got the, the flash drive, like, here you go. Like, people are still nah. hand-to-hand shit. I'm saying you got to go to music conferences, but the only thing about Boston and Massachusetts, there's really nothing out here. But like, 50, the biggest you got to travel People don't to. understand about Boston. You got to travel to. never been a hip-hop city. It's a rock and roll city. Nah, it is. Aerosmith. It's, you know... That's definitely. the type, you know, when it comes to There's like, actually major rock and roll labels out here. That's yeah, the crazy you know, part. There's definitely. major rock and roll labels. Like, that was really, like, I mean, when I was coming up, shoot, not to tell my age and all, but shit, we only had WILD, KISS 108. Come on, If your W-I-L-D. antennas work right, we could get WRBB. Where would Always you, get um, the college station. Tell me, like, two of the three, tell me three dudes that you think are nice in the city besides yourself. Three dudes that are nice in the city. Well, eight zip. Shout out fan. zip. Shout um, out flame. Cincinnati Rose. That's three dudes right That's there. That's three dudes. Nice. Yeah, eight zip. Who was the second one? I didn't hear. Exit fame. Exit fame. Cincinnati, Cincinnati Rose. Rose. All right. That's my baby. I can say what's the name? Damn near um been on everybody's list. Eight zip. That's how you know that nigga really moving through the city. Sorry. Hey, nice. I know who that is. No bullshit. Little young boy from um, the Worthy, little age block. Yeah. Oh, they got that got shooters it. music. Yeah. But nice. out of every shoot, rapper that I asked, yo, besides yourself, who would you damn near the first thing they said was A Zip? No bullshit. Nigga was like, yo, he really moving on. Right, I nice, think bro. somebody else had Flame's name too. I want to say Flame got mentioned like once or twice in it too. <laughs> But it's good to know who niggas be fucking with in this city. I can see who's actually rapping. You feel me? I'll go listen to your lyrics. I'm going to go listen to your shit. Because there's mad people dropping music mm-hmm. right. and videos. Because everybody not. Like I said, there's no even the vid- whether the people shooting the videos or the radio people or the promoters. Nobody gives a fuck if you got talent. Mm-hmm. 
They're gonna take your money and do it for you. And just do it. So it's like so much videos out here now because everybody's dropping videos, and I watch them like it was this person nice. And there's, like there's the exit fames, there's the eight zips. You feel me? There's the P Garcies and certain other people whose music might hit me differently. Like even Piff Man, Piff Man got some fire music. I then heard you got the too. you got the ones who I'll see you on got the Boston Music Awards and shit like that, and mm-hmm. I'll go look at their videos and be like, how the fuck did this person get through? Because it be more the connects than anything. A lot of yeah, niggas be knowing niggas. And, and, and a lot they of niggas. Seen nah, but that's what I tell niggas because a like, lot of these other rappers what I realize about be going to these summits and shit. They, they be going, going to all these hip hop shits. Like, like they be at shit. I'm like, yo, how we not hear about this? Like, I don't even remember. I think only went because Bay Holler was doing and I told her I'll come to a show. Early. But Shout out, Bay. doing shows here, people. Yeah. You just going, you just. Some Only. people I think are comfortable and don't want to get uncomfortable. And what I say by that, they used to doing the Dublin House type of show, wow. things of that nature. They got to go. love to the Dublin House. They want to be shows. Shows Shout their out to the They got to go do your shows for strangers, someone who can really critique mm-hmm. your music and become a real fan. You need you need to bring people into the crowds. It's like, yeah. and that's why I said like the difference between now and even the hip hop scene. A few, I say, two thousand six, two thousand seven. The way the hip hop scene was a lot different as far as you go to shows, you open up shows. Sometimes the radio stations are literally pop up at a show. Wow. Right. Sometimes the executives from Sony, Def Jam, and shit will really pop up at a show. Like, yo, we here to see if we see somebody who's nice. we looking for artists. The difference like, today, though, don't is do that too, no you can't, you got to worry about going to the show and worry about if them little ninjas. And that's what and I'm trying to say. And start shooting it up. Right. Like, they got to know when to yeah. separate the streets from. It ain't no separation. You know, there's no separation in anything today. Like, and that's what I be trying to say. Wilding, but mm. they knew how to. When we went out, we got to go home. So I mean, because niggas is like that, that's what they make like street shit on the street. Anybody shit. could become a rapper, and that's why now people ain't coming to these shows because they know right. nobody. Like made they way to this show. Yeah, Everybody got just on. got put on the show. Got on it. So niggas be like, fuck going to this show. This this might be the nigga hosting the show. Everybody he cool with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Really so fucked it up. That's what I said. It'd be but crazy. It but yeah. really fucked up the game is when they first started throwing shows and putting like 14, 15, 16 acts on one show. That'd Sixteen people that nobody like. It might be three or four that people know, and the rest nobody's ever heard of. And it's like. Back in back in the day, I learned at an early age, like you know, when you're first hearing about music and want to do music, you want to be that person that performs last. You want to mm-hmm. be that headliner. Mm-hmm. It's like it's the dopest shit to be the mm-hmm. headliner to shut down the show. But as I started performing and going to shows and local shows, you see, it sucks to be first and it can suck to be last. It sure enough can. Uh, Either way, the reason why, if you're <laughs> first, you could be the person testing the microphone. Nobody the show just started. Yet. The mic's shitty. The, uh, it's all out of order You're performing Your vocals ain't connected to it The DJ's messing up on your music bullshit. That always happens a lot of times To that first performer mm-hmm. Then the last performer By the time you get on the stage Everybody's gone yeah. Unless you are somebody That everybody knows The only time you could be That last person If everybody came for you and that's Beyond how, that That's how promoters do them now What they do is like They get one person So it'll be like say I'm gonna get Exit Flame and I know everybody know him, so I'm going to push everything just under him. And all the niggas that perform, they expecting him to push, homie. Yo, I'm performing at this shit with such and such. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the shit's all fucked up now. That's why I say it made it crazy now the way anybody could just get in. Now you could just hit on your motherfucking iPhone and make yeah. a video and then upload it and that shit's in the world. And this shit, like, this shit be you know hacking and hacking. It's like... Four niggas had to be, nah, that ain't gonna do it. That ain't gonna do it. So they... It was shit before it got to the yeah. world. Now when nigga just hit sin, that stupid shit's in the world in this yeah. bathroom. And personally, it's like... <laughs> I be uh, like... some the part, A part of me, you feel me? A part of me wants to be a bully. A part of me be seeing shit and be like, yo... I should just hit this dude up and be like, yo, bro, what the fuck was that? That was trash, man. You got to fix that, work on that, do something. That's not it. But then it's like, people so emotional, you can't do shit like that. And then people look at you like you're wrong if you do it. So it's like, I hear certain videos and shit that hit my thing. And I look at it. I look at the comments on Facebook. 
He was, oh, dope, fire. Mad that's hot. fire, mad flames. That's, that's dope. <laughs> I'm looking at it like, yo, hold on. Word. Am I in the Twilight Zone? Like, I'm telling you. This shit does not. Because it be a bunch of niggas that know it's this nigga. And it's you know how many niggas I don't love. even listen to I, it, just I, hit I the heart? I like all that shit. That's true. I like that. I didn't even listen Word. to it. Great, yeah, they didn't listen to it. I like Word. One of my that mans song recently. Is for me. Yeah, two of my mans recently was inside of a message group with me. And they created a group and they was going back and forth with their songs. Now, this is how you know people don't listen. The person who created the group, he posted his link, and then my other man's posted his link. So the person who created the group had mad hearts, fire, fire, fire. You clicked the link, it wasn't working. I was about to say, it was nothing. It was never working. So <laughs> after that, he realized, damn, the link ain't working. So he was like, how I get more likes than your song, and my link's not even working? Only it shows you people don't give a fuck. His motherfuckers not be, clicking on the link. They just, just know your name. Word. That's my boy. I'm gonna yeah. like it. Word. And niggas know you would see the like and make you think they was yeah, in they it. Checked it out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And niggas really don't. And I be saying that. Was lit. Nah, you ain't Mad niggas don't shit. check shit out. You ain't they even listen to it. Now nah, people, I, you know, people I see that I never seen like anything, and I'll see them and be like, oh, bro. The shit you been doing is hard as hell, my nigga. I've been following everything. I like everything you're doing. I'll be like. I never seen a comment, a like, a but heart. But you know what? They probably were. But they do. They, they just there's, don't there's, wanna... there's silent watches. I know that. There's a lot of silent watches. Mm-hmm. And it'd be crazy to be a silent watch. There's more watch. silent the watches these days. Yeah. Talking about the ones that like, won't gotta, people, be looking at uh, it. Yo, I have a problem with them people. Like, make yourself be known. It's nothing wrong with it. Like, because there'd be more silent people that'll watch the whole video. Yeah. It might not even hit the like button. Just... Watch the whole shit on it. Skip through it. Niggas got to stop. That's what I'm saying. I think um, somehow I think this summer we need to find more ways to bring niggas together. You know what I'm saying? And stop putting real rappers on these stages. You know what I'm saying? And giving real rappers they do. I definitely think we need to find a way to start bringing some money to the city. Sometimes you got to bring it back to the days of tryouts. Come on, tryouts. Like in order to perform at this show, you got to try out for this show. Shit, I don't even yeah, think they have like that no more. Like that's talent that's, show. that's yeah, where the yeah, world they got show. like so Type fucked shit. up. There's no tryouts no more. Everybody shit, just gets no. in. You're in. You're in. No bullshit. Nah, no, that's right. definitely really shit. Because there's no tryouts in anything now. That's what I'm saying. They don't you just gotta accept it. Checks. That's why there's always issues the day of the show. No bullshit. These promoters and these yeah. club people, they don't even. Everybody's just chasing check the, the equipment. Make sure everybody's stuff is compatible. Yeah. Like it's always an issue. Nah, you already know that. To the week of the show, not even a week. That's, well, the that's good. Couple <laughs> days before to try to do things, and it's Yo, that's why it's always so crazy, an issue. Right? It's like I used to love like my city as a hip hop artist. I did. I like what I mean, I used to brag uh-huh. about it. Like because every time your birthday you come up. The club promoters used to reach out to the artists like, "Yo, let me host your party out here. Let me yeah, host. Let me host no your more. birthday party here." Right. Like it was like an every year thing that I knew every year. Like I don't gotta look for no club. Some promoters gonna hit me up, and I'm gonna use my that club for my birthday party. Right. And it's like nowadays you don't get none of that. There's the promoters not reaching out. Nobody's talking. Nobody's. It's like Shoot, nowadays you ain't gonna get much today, especially when you got the cards. Early. Speaking of shows, you got one coming up. Yeah, like I'm, I'm kind of in the debate oh. because I just performed there last week. Okay. And no offense to the people there, it just wasn't what I expected. So it was like I might do it, but a lot of people couldn't get in because they didn't have COVID cards. They told them originally you, you had to have either either have the COVID card or they was gonna do testing once you got there. Oh my God. And people got came there looking for testing. They didn't have the testing, so they had to turn people back because of COVID cards. So. That's Man. one of the reasons I forgot shit done got crazy that's like that too And I'll be honest Y'all voted for her That's one of the reasons <laughs> Another reason to me personally is like I y'all freedom of choice Professionalism goes a long fucking way mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't want to be professional And like I said Not to throw dirt on nobody Anybody like that But it's a lot of these promoters They have showcases And be like yo You want to make a flyer for your showcase? Yeah, you got like seven, eight artists performing here. Why am I making a flyer for oh, a showcase? Bullshit. Why am I doing anything? That's Why one thing. It's like you, you ask me to perform and I got to make a showcase for a flyer. That's another thing. You feel me? That gets me with things. And then it's the, it's the lack of not wanting to pay for advertisement. That's just everybody. Like if I got to pay for a show, I don't mind sometimes if I got to put money down for a show. Right. That's cool. 
But I want to hear about this show on the radio or something. Mm-hmm. Right, Even well. if it's in one ad at four o'clock every single day. Yo, check out D Nation live at so and so. Live at so and so. People well. who don't know who the fuck D Nation is while they're driving their car and hear that ad is going to be like, yo, who's this nigga they talking about? On the radio. Let me go check this event out. Nobody announces events, period, no more. It's just social media. Yeah, I didn't know there was a vet at the Middle East the other day. Yeah, yeah. they've been throwing up shit. Oh, Exit Fame and performed the other day. Yeah, they've been every, yeah, but my point is, like, it's not, it's not when I started out. in this promotion game, when I was doing in the early 2Gs, we knew about that shit. There the was early. stickers every day. Like, nobody does no... And, Word they depend too much on social media Cause they yeah. do They just Word respect the they, they, they depend too much on the person They partnering up with To promote the event They depend too much on the DJ Which I believe If you a DJ You want your shit rocking You Early. should be promoting the event But they a lot of them don't it. do because that Because they're not going for that going DJ status no more People say they're a DJ And not to take nothing Because there's some dope DJs in the city Who just haven't took it to that next step but a lot of people say they're a DJ, but they're not going for that statue to rock a party. They want to get their set off and all that extra shit, but they're not really trying to turn the crowd up and control mm-hmm. the crowd. Yeah, what's a lot the, of dudes don't want to pay for that. That's what I'm saying. So dudes why are pay. you there? Because niggas be want to get their bread. You are a DJ. Well, you supposed to rock the party. Niggas people is trying to hump you. some bras. That's it. You should think that that's <laughs> your show. Now, Most let me ask you a question if you really think about it, right? Fuck. There's mad artists, but how many artists have an actual DJ? Shit. Back in the day, an artist will find a DJ to go be part yeah. of your team. Mm-hmm. A right. DJ was part of that yeah, rap team. Like, yo, I need like you to mix this. I need you to from, fix this. So you like, say they took that the whole option. aspect. They took that. They separated the, the they separated the artist from the DJ. Right. Tell me. They put the DJs on all radio stations now. Most DJs is either a personality or something like that. But it was never like back in the You're day. Right. Like back you in the day, the DJ We got we got a party. We about to show up over here. We gonna turn this place up. I need my DJ. This is my DJ. Right. That's my DJ, and he knew how to perform. A DJ is a performer. Very, yes. Yeah, that's as what I'm well. talking about. That's why I said if you a DJ, despite whether you're an artist, that's your artist or not, that's your craft. You want to see people rocking off of what you're doing. Yeah, spending so records. Why aren't you making Spin sure records. you have someone to dance to your ish? It's so true. Because. The rapping or the artist is not rapping all night. They have a set. They might do two. And you got to understand the separation bef- wow. for the DJ and the artist is, is fucked up. Yeah, it is. They, the separation like, like, like. Get there. They can't. Pl- the, 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 the shit they using it ain't compatible. Who is it? Um, Funk Master so. Flex said it. He said, it's not the DJ's job to break an artist no more. A lot of artists look for a DJ to break their record across the world. It is not our job to break artists no more. Now. We look for artists who already have momentum, and we utilize them. Wow. We don't no longer whack. look for artists to break artists. Because now everything's like, no more take the hard way. Everything's take the easy way. Like, let me have a buzz, and I'm going to put them on. All I got to do is throw them on, son, and it's going to up this you, shit you even. You pay attention to the statistics. Even in the city, it's like, yeah, it's so all clicks. It's all clicks. Yeah. If, if this whole hood's riding for this nigga and saying this nigga, this nigga, I don't care if, if the other dude's way better than him. The DJs is gonna push that dude that everybody's riding for. Wow. Only because, like, it's a click thing, a popularity thing. But I right, his, his team's more um, popular. Let me br- let me brush shoulders with them. In Atlanta That's too. Some weak whack shit. When you see these young boys like Lil Baby, um, you see how many like niggas in them first videos older niggas that was in the rap game before him was in them videos and that's when I started like damn that be the niggas pushing these little niggas like yo we got you getting them in the club yo now nah, push my little homie niggas don't be wanting to do that you know what I'm saying yeah. everybody just not here figure it out you know what I'm saying like I definitely think yo we definitely have to find a way to entwine it and motherfuckers to be able to come together cause until there's some togetherness, there's no bag. I'm telling you, man, it's crazy. Niggas just want to keep doing all this shit for free. Podcasts is for free. Rapping for free. All that shit. It's like... I'll be honest. Nowadays, the DJ doesn't really jump on the bandwagon until you get signed. No, nah, definitely. And I'll be honest, like, because I've been paying attention. Like, I'm a very good observer. And I watch all the artists who made it out of the city. And I'll be like, all right, cool, be it. I didn't even know she was like, from the city. Do I know her? She's from Effort originally. Oh, that's why. I'm like so now, Bia takes off. Who's her DJ now on her ro- on the road? DJ E Double. Uh, you feel me? 
Let's see, fucking um, Jordan Lu- Lucas. He took off. Who's Jordan Lucas's DJ? Pup Dog. Uh, oh, like, okay. Once you take off and get this deal, these major label DJs from our city, that's when they really be like, I'm going to be his DJ. Wow. I'm pretty sure if one of them's not Millie's DJ yet, pretty soon, eventually, they will. I be. forgot who Millie DJ is, so. But, nah, niggas definitely need to think about it. But before we pack it up, man, um, one thing I usually ask everybody, um, if you, and I'm talking about all around, if you could get any piece, what piece would it be? And I mean, like, any record label piece, like, anything. It could be death row to some new shit up to date. But just one piece, what would you take? Well, out of all the, it would have to be like a some with Tupac. Like honestly, that's my that's my legacy. So artist. would you like, take like what a death row? Uh, I don't know, like the All Eyes on Me chain or something. I don't know about it. Could be death row, but like, cause well, like, his, like his legacy outlaw. Outlaw shit was outlaws crazy. Be way better for me. And I was ready to say, I just um, feel like his legacy is bigger than death row. And that's crazy. Um. And he had the Death Row East pieces too. How Wack tried to do the um, West Coast shit, but um, that's crazy. You said Outlaws. You the first one that um said that. Nobody else ever thought of that piece. Everybody used the big pieces. You know what I'm saying? So, Outlaw chance for you. Now that's dope. So where can we catch you at for more? We gonna have them spit some fire once we come back. You know what I'm saying? But we won't let them cash out and let y'all know where y'all can find them. Fuck with them. Download his music. Get with him, man. Like I said, Boston need to support Boston. Facts. You can find me on therealdnation.com. That's my website. You also find me on youtube.com, thatpiff.com, soundcloud.com. You can find me on Spotify, Apple Music, and every other social media network that's out there. Because I'm on everything from Snapchat to Facebook to Instagram to everything. Just look for the Real D Nation. I'm not hard to find. I'm not hiding. So it's no secrets. I put a lot of content out there so you can check it out. So please definitely support. Keep showing love. And just bring your A game if you ever decide to challenge me. Period. Early. Bring your A game. Miss Lady. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Day, always. You know my doors is open to you. Been trying to get you up here for a minute. Been like I a know. good two months. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. But you know, like I said, man. Um, you know we the hood, man. You gonna see a lot of hood faces, a lot of hood people, a lot of good motherfuckers come fuck with us and you know kick it. So definitely be on the lookout for everybody. But we gonna come back, have them spit some bars, heat this shit up real quick for a moment. Your day. This should stop podcast. Looking just like that on YouTube. God bless and stay tuned for that hot fire.